Okay, let's start this morning then officially. Um, let me just read a page from Happy Life. A wonderful book, psychographic by uh, Givaldo Franco, by the Spiritual and the Langelist. And let's see what we have in store for us. The moment you make high-minded resolutions and spare yourself mental imbalance, people will try to convince you that you are making a big mistake. Stay the course and don't listen to them. When you fall, few hands will try to help you up. There is no lack of those who will push you even deeper into the abyss of despair. Sadly, selfless helpers are in the minority, while the majority love to cause you grief. Continue on your path of goodness, and God will be very good to you. Learn from life's lessons, but more importantly, learn from your own experiences. Be wary of the siren song, which can lure you onto the reef. When alcoholics wish to stop drinking, it is easier for them to find someone willing to serve them another drink than someone to give them bread. When smokers want to stop smoking, they are met with the sarcasm of their friends who insist they continue poisoning themselves. When drug addicts, ad ad addicts want to stop using, dealers threaten, threaten them and blackmail them. When, off, when offenders of any kind attempt rehabilitation, a conspiring mob pushes back. So be careful. Stay physically and morally sound. Strong message of transformation, right? Both are transformational, right? Let's just stick to our transformation, right? To be good by choice. And with that in mind, let's do the prayer. Let's open in prayer then. Um, Mother, Father, God, Divine Creator, thank you very much for all you have been given to us. And inspire, inspire Daniel today. Convey your messages. And let us all be with our hearts open and minds sound so we can not just feel you in our hearts but have our thoughts filled with the work you propose to us thank you very much to all those that guide us to our mentors and guides and especially to our master jesus the model the example the humble one. And with that in mind, we ask permission to begin our meeting this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Anis. And hello, friends. It is wonderful to see you one more time, especially after such a beautiful and powerful message um, that I think has a lot to do with what I had in mind for us to talk about today for a little bit. Um, my name is Dan, and I'm, I'm really happy to be here to be a part of this group. And today I wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking with you about spiritism, but spiritism within the confines of mental health. I think that we can all agree that the world has turned upside down over the past couple of years. Not necessarily uh, it's not necessarily true that the world was beautiful before that. We already struggled with things. But I think that we know that it's been really hard uh, to see this culmination of things going on. You know, we, we have a lot of political division. We have a lot of uh, racial injustice. We have a lot of discrimination. We have war going on. We obviously had a pandemic. And now we are also worried about economic instability in the future and so forth. Inflation, recession. There is a lot going on. And sometimes we, we wonder, right? How, how do we handle all these things? Because 
there's a lot of loneliness, a lot of discouragement, a lot of lack of purpose and fear and certainty out there, and it can be overwhelming. It certainly can, and it gets to us. And sometimes we ask, how do we navigate all of this? Is this the way the world really is supposed to be? And what do we do with it? And if we are not careful, it's easy for us to fall into the trap of thinking that this is how the world really is and that there's nothing we can do about it. So today we want to talk a little bit about how we can navigate that and keep sane. But more than keep sane, we also want to talk about thriving. We're going to talk a little bit about that. It's not just about surviving. It's about thriving, about being happy, being fulfilled. And, and obviously I am biased, but I can't think of no better tool to have me centered and prepared to deal with the challenges of this modern world than spiritism. And hopefully I will make the case of a couple of tools that can help us, a couple of thinking processes that can help us stay healthy and stay positive and stay growing so that we can thrive. Does that make sense? I might go with things a little bit uh, faster than normally I would, um, but this still, I think, gives you an overarching perspective of what my angle on this is, and you can always think and, of course, reflect on your own of whether this makes sense or not, All right? So I want to first start talking about mental health. We have used and uh, heard this word or this term quite a bit, and one way to position or think about mental health is that it's the emotional, psychological, and social well-being. So it's not just one thing, but it's a combination of things that make you feel well. It's about well-being. It's not about the absence of illness. It is about well-being, right? So it's not enough not to be suffering. It's not enough not to be stressed. What we're really looking about is how do we, how how do we be well? Um, and obviously, it's very important because we know that how we think and our mental health really impacts how we deal with stress, how we deal with relationships that we have all around us, and how we deal with decision making. And so we want to chat briefly about some of these things because I think that once we get uh, a good hold on our mental health, our whole life transforms because we can handle stress better, we can deal with our relationships, and we're better able to make decisions about what is important to us. Does that make sense? All right. So the way we do this is by taking a little bit of perspective here. So for instance, what do you see in this picture? What do you think this picture is of? A forest. A forest. Mm -hmm. There's no right or wrong answer here. Like leaves. Leaves. Confetti. Confetti. Very different answers, right? And that's okay. You know, I think it really also, in, it's probably impacted by how we think about the world. I've, I've told people, uh, I, I have heard from people that this looked like the COVID virus, for instance, <laughs> um, or balloons, right, or many different things. But what is this really? So if you're curious, this is actually a little piece of a larger canvas. You see this picture over there that you think you'll be able to see on the screen? That is a painting by Georges-Pierre Seurat, a pointillistic um, um, artist. And this is from 18, the 1880s, and it's called A Sunday Afternoon, the Isle of Grand Jatte. And that little patch there that I showed you, it's a piece of, a, of the dress of the woman to which you see in the arrow. And the way that Georges-Pierre Seurat painted, which was really innovative for his time, he painted with little dots to make a whole picture. And I thought this fascinating. For us today, it's probably no surprise because we have computer screens, we have TVs, and that's how they work, right? Little dots of color make a bigger image. But I think it's really interesting because if you just look at that patch that we first started with, you may not be able to see the big picture. You may not be able to see the whole narrative that is going on there that I think you can appreciate is very different than the first you started with, right? There's a beautiful afternoon. There's like people chilling by the lake, you know, close to Paris. Um, some dressed very nicely and properly, others not so much. Oh, look at that. The guy is like showing his arms. Oh my goodness, in the 1880s. Uh, very risque, right? Um, but I think that the point here that we make is 
perspective matters. If you are close to the canvas, all you see are dots. But if you take a couple of steps back, then you can see the big picture. And then you're able to comprehend what's going on. It doesn't mean that you can never look close. It just means that you get a better picture and you understand what these dots are about. Do you follow me? So why do I say that? I say that because I find spiritism to be that lens that lets us take a step back from our lives and see the big picture. And I think, at least for me, that when I do that, I'm able to understand the whole canvas and not be as concerned about the little dots or at least understand what the little dots up close are for and why they are there. Why do I say that? Well, I say that because uh, Spiritism brings us many different pieces of information that really help us uh, understand this. First of all, Spiritism has given us a better understanding of mediumship. And even though most of us may not be what we call extensive mediums that can really communicate with the spiritual world, for the past 160 years, Spiritism has given us the gift of understanding how this relationship between worlds work. And why is that important? Because we're then able to get information from people who have that higher perspective, who have lived in the world like we, that we, we do, and can give us a better sense of why things are the way they are and what is it that we can do to have a better life. And we're, when we're able to understand that, when we're able to tap into this knowledge, we begin to calm our hearts down a little bit because we feel more in control of knowing what's happening. We're no longer as lonely, we're no longer uncertainty, as fearful, and all those things that are plaguing us right now. So for us, spiritists, this, this knowledge is really powerful, more powerful than we imagine. I mean, and it's hard to deny because... We talk to the spirits in our mediumistic meetings. We read messages from the spirits. It's hard for us to deny that there is this bigger picture. We just forget about it. But what does this picture mean? What does this bigger picture mean to us? Well, a couple of things, and this is where I might kind of go quickly here. Because, you know, as you noticed, I have a tendency to talk. So I need to rein myself in so I talk less. All right. The first thing we'll know is that the world will get better. It's a certainty. We have been told so. Not now, not 10 years ago, but 150 and 60 years ago. Why is that? Because everything is constantly evolving. In Spiritism, we know this. We know that there is a God and that the God's watching out for us. And so this apparent mess out there in the world, war, discord, anger, and all these things, they are part of the process of uh, evolution. So. We need to start with the idea that there is certainty that the world will get better because it always does. And when that takes place in our heart, I mean, takes hold of our heart, maybe it gives us a little bit of a, uh, a breather. We can say, okay, it's a mess right now, but God is in control and the world will get better. It's a certainty that we have. And when we do that, we also realize that there is a lot of goodness in the world. Sometimes we forget that because we see only negative things out there. And we can talk a little bit about why that is if we have time. But there is so much kindness out there. As a matter of fact, there has never been as much kindness in the world as there is now. Why? Because the world is always improving. There has never been as many people or nonprofits caring for each other. There has never been as many people donating to worthwhile causes than it, there is right now. The challenge is that goodness is shy. We don't see those good acts because they are not as loud as the negative ones. The negative ones, the war, the fighting, and so forth, just pops up on our radar screen more clearly for us and because we're looking at that. But if you change your lens and go through your day, I bet you're going to find some beautiful acts of kindness that are going unnoticed. So there is hope for us because the world is getting better and there is a lot of goodness in the heart. Take, for instance, this place. This place is sort of a miracle nowadays because there's no one here 
that gets payment to be here. In a world where everything is about resources and money in many ways, this is an oasis of miracle because this exists even though nobody gets any kind of payment. As a matter of fact, it costs us money to be here. So people are donating to be here. It's quite the opposite of the world. We do this because we think it's right and we think it's good, not because it will benefit us materially. That's goodness. If you need an example of palpable goodness in the world, if you're struggling to find something out there, just look at these walls, these curtains, these cameras, these seats, the coffee back there. Right? It had to make its way here, and somehow it happened. So there's goodness in the world. I'm going to go through this quickly, but I think we can do this. You know what else is wonderful, too? We also know that you, I, we, were prepared for these times. Because we know that there is reincarnation. And we know that there is a God that is just and kind. If God is not just or kind, then God cannot be God, because that's the definition of God. So the fact that you're here means that you can handle this challenge. Otherwise, God would never put you in a place where you can't handle the challenge. You are prepared for this. And we know this too because we have had so many incarnations before. And guess what? You have survived 100% of your worst days. It's just a factual truth. Yes. Have you struggled? Yes. Probably many lifetimes. Was it painful? Yes. But did you survive? Yes. And guess what? You will survive spiritually this one too. You were prepared for this. And because there is evolution, everything that we've done before has helped us grow to be able to tackle this problem. So these problems, in a roundabout way, are a complement to us when we think spiritually. So the challenges you have in your life are a tribute to your ability to meet them. And that's reassuring. You've got this. You can do this. And as a matter of fact, it's not about just surviving exercise. You've come to blossom, not suffer. For some reason, over time, some of us have get stuck into this idea that we are here to suffer, that life is suffering, that there is no choice. That, that's not true. If we are in constant evolution and there is a kind God, we're not here just to kind of make it through and suffer. We've got to let go of this thinking process that has been with us for maybe many incarnations. Doesn't matter where it came from, if it was ours, if it was from different religious thinking, it doesn't matter. It's time to let that go. You came here to be happy. God has created you to be happy. And we have to give ourselves permission to be happy. It is okay for you to be happy even in difficult times. Sometimes we feel bad, I can't be happy, there's a pandemic going on. Yes, you can. In that five minute that you're with your child, with your wife, or you did something that you like, you were happy, and that is okay. It's okay. Blossom. That's what you're here for. It doesn't mean that we don't pay attention to the suffering of others. It doesn't mean that we're not empathetic. But we can give ourselves permission to be happy and joy and grow. Because once we do, it starts a chain reaction and it helps other people be happy too. And that's really powerful. You were made to be happy. You can never forget that. But I want to be clear, and this we know, we are not on vacation. We did not come on spiritual vacation. Sometimes we act like it, right? We want life over here to be as easy, as enjoyable as possible. In a perfect world, I would like not to work and have enough money to do whatever the heck I want to. That's me, right? I have to remind myself that I have asked to reincarnate so in this point in time so I can learn something. But sometimes I forget. I think I'm on vacation. But we've come here to work on ourselves and help the world. Our life is like a day of work. We go to work, then we discarnate, go back home, rest for a little bit, improve, and come back and work again. But somehow, when we forget that we're spiritual beings, we think the other way around. We think that we should have all the fun here. But we don't get to have all the fun at work, do we? No, it's about building, it's about growing. So it's also important for us to realize 
that it's normal that things are the way they are because it's work. We're not on vacation. We're not on spiritual vacation. Doesn't mean that you can't take vacations, people. Let me just be clear, right? It's okay for you to take some vacations and enjoy yourself, but that's not what life is all about. It's not just about fun and games all the time. It's about growth. Growth can be fun and games if you have the right mindset, but it's not about just enjoyment selfishly. Right? And what else can Spiritism tell us? And perhaps this is the most important one and one that gets to my heart every single time. We're never alone. We know this because we see and speak and hear the spirits. We know that there is a God. So even in our hardest days, we're not alone. We just make it so that we are in our heads and we feel alone. But now that we know that we are immortal beings that come here onto this earth and take this physical form in what we call an incarnation, and we do this as many times as it takes for us to grow, we should also connect the dots and think that we have had many friends and many family members from previous lives that we do not remember. And they have not stopped loving us because we do not stop loving those who pass away. I think all of us here may have, quote, quote, lost somebody we cared about in this lifetime. It's a horrible term, lost. We have not lost anything. We just can't see them. And we feel like, we feel the loss. We feel that pain. But the truth is, we have not stopped loving them. They have not stopped loving us. And so just think about this. They continue to love us. And if they continue to love us, what is to say that those who loved us in previous lives don't do the same. You have had mothers, fathers, cousins, partners, siblings that have loved you and continue to love you. You just don't remember because you're temporarily in the flesh. And to give you a clean slate, you can't remember because it's good for you. But once you recall this, you are never alone. In fact, your spiritual family is greater than you can possibly imagine. How many times have you lived before? Don't answer. Rhetorical question. I don't know. But let's say a hundred times, maybe more. You've had a hundred mothers, fathers, cousins. Maybe they were the same people every once in a while. But you get the idea. You have hundreds, if not thousands, of people who deeply care for you in the other world. Other side of the world, I should say, your life. And here's a really cool piece. The more you build these relationships, the more this family grows. This family never diminishes in size. Your next lives will get you to enlarge your circle of love. In the math of love, spiritually speaking, there is no subtraction. Isn't that powerful? It is very powerful. So, we can talk about different things. And this is the part that I'm going to skip for time here. It's hard sometimes to be in the world right now because with this negative thinking that we are immersed in, it affects us. So it's like walking through molasses. We call it psychosphere. The psychic atmosphere of our thoughts are making things harder now. So it's okay for you to struggle with things sometimes. And it's also very important for us to understand the science of stress. Because we are also bodies right now. And in the science of stress, we know that there is this little hormone called cortisol. And cortisol gets produced right, when you are stressed. And what does it do? It enhances the brain's use of glucose, of energy, to help you survive. And this is an inheritance from our evolutionary path, right? Like, I'll give you an example. You were walking down the woods and you see a tiger in front of you. Not Tiger Woods, but a real tiger, right? Um, he's not carrying a golf club. You see a tiger. Historically, evolutionarily speaking, um, that's a threat to you. Right? We don't see many tigers nowadays in the forest, right? But So what does it do? Your body then produces cortisol that enhances the energy in your brain and helps your brain create substances in your body to pump you up in case you have to fight or you get hurt so you can recover quickly. But it also basically says, I'll shut down any other perception because I need to focus on this challenge right now because there's a tiger in front of me. When you are looking at a tiger, you're not thinking, Oh, what a beautiful tree over there. I really like the blue butterfly. What a wonderful lake I just passed by two miles ago. 
These are things you are not thinking about when a tiger is in front of you. You are shut down to fight or flight, right? That makes sense. However, if you just stay there, you can't see the big picture. So the more we stress ourselves, the more we are programming ourselves to just see the threats and the dangers in front of us. So it's important for us to break away from that by zooming out to see the big picture. By thinking of Sarah again and not looking at just the dots, but at the canvas. Because that what allows us to see the world in its full color. And that's why I like Spiritism so much, because it lets me take that step back and realize that I am no longer in front of a tiger. The tiger now is metaphorical. It is the challenges that I create, the stress that I create. But once I remember who I am spiritually and what I am here to do and the support that I have, it becomes quite a lot easier for me to be okay and be centered. Does it mean I will not struggle? No. It means that my struggles will be more manageable. The challenge is how do we do that? How do we remember these things? That's a choice that we need to make, and that's the toughest part. I often, often joke that we spend more time brushing our teeth every day than reflecting on ourselves as spiritual beings. I do that. I don't spend four minutes of my day thinking about me as a spirit sometimes. When I do, my day is better. But I don't. I forget. I get trapped. So what are the practices and habits, habits that we can set for ourselves to remind us that we are the immortal spirit that is temporarily passing through this because we asked to so that we could learn and grow and that we are supported by a loving God, a creator of all things, and a plethora and a multitude of spirits who love us so dearly that it's hard for us to comprehend. And when I am able to understand that the challenges I face will help me grow and that they are within my ability to tackle them, I take a breath. I let oxygen in my brain. I reduce my cortisol level. I think spiritually. And now I make choices that are better for me as a spirit. <coughs> I can work on my relationships and I can manage stress. All those things that we know that mental health is about, about well-being. So I think, because I'm short on time, that that's the invitation that lingers. It's changing that mindset. And I think that's what Jesus came to tell us, to give us the example that we are going to win over this world. Just like he resurrected, we resurrect spiritually too. We also live many times. We know this as a fact now because the spirits tell us about reincarnation. So we are going to win over this world. We are going to go through this, and this world can kill our body, but he cannot kill us. You are bulletproof. You are indestructible spiritually. How awesome is that? Superman ain't got nothing on you. Because he's got kryptonite. But you, you cannot possibly be destroyed, spiritually speaking. God has made you that way. And we're beginning to understand it. That's powerful. And the love. And the love that we have that we forget. So, when I struggle, I go back here. I go back to these tools that Spiritism has given me to remind me that the kindness and justice of God through the things I have observed, read, felt, seen, studied, reincarnation, mediumship, love, forgiveness, all these things help me be more centered. But for to do that, I have to develop some sort of practice that takes me there every single day. And I think that's the challenge that we leave for ourselves and for everybody. Can we make time and space in our hearts to think a little bit about ourselves as spiritual beings every day? Because I think if we do, we'll be able to zoom out and see the big picture. And in seeing the beauty of the big picture, we'll have healthier, more balanced, and more fulfilling lives. So yay for Spiritism as a tool of mental health, and I, think it, I hope it may help you as much as it has helped me through these difficult times.